Welcome back, my friends, to Big Bill Anderson's Death Tours. I am here at St. Francis Cemetery in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm here to pay my respects to this gentleman right here, Mr. Lou Ambers. Lou was a two-time world lightweight boxing champion back in the 1930s. He was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame, as well as the Italian-American Hall of Fame. And I'm gonna tell you quite a bit about this man's life story. Mr. Lou Ambers, stay with me, my friends. Thank you. Born Luigi Giuseppe D'Ambrosio on November 8th, 1913 in Herkimer, New York, Ambers started out in a large Italian family, struggling to find an identity. Luigi took the ring named Lou Ambers because he was afraid his Italian mother would find out that he was a fighter. He defeated future world junior welterweight champion Johnny Jadick in a 10-round unanimous decision on March 19, 1934 in Holyoke, Massachusetts. Ambers defeated former world junior welterweight claimant Sammy Fuller on March 5, 1935 in 15 rounds of a unanimous decision at Madison Square Garden before a crowd of 10,000. Ambers was stunned by a left from Fuller in the third round, but had his way with his opponent much of the remainder of the bout, taking an impressive 13 of 15 rounds. Managed by Al Wheel and trained by Charlie Goldman, the Herkimer Hurricane began his career losing only once in more than three years. He faced his greatest competitor, future Hall of Fame lightweight champion Tony Ken Zoneri on May 10, 1935. Ken Zoneri defeated him over 15 rounds on a decision in Madison Square Garden, robbing Ambers of his first shot at the title. Ken Zoneri had Ambers down twice in round three. A faithful crowd of 17,433 cheered as Ken Zoneri easily retook the title knocking Ambers down again shortly before the closing bell. Ambers did not let the defeat discourage him winning his next 15 fights. In one of his most difficult matches, Ambers defeated Fritz Zivik on July 1, 1935 in a 10-round unanimous decision in Millville, Pennsylvania. Ambers took the lead Ambers took the lead in the opening rounds and had enough of a points margin to take the decision. But in the last two rounds, he retreated often, his jaw being broken in the ninth by what appeared to be a right to the chin. Zivik opened up with a right-handed attack in the ninth and tenth that was simply not adequate to overcome the large points margin opened up by his opponent. Ambers was examined by a local hospital after the bout and released. Before a crowd of 8,266, Ambers defeated the highly rated former junior lightweight champion Freddie Click in a 10-round points decision at Madison Square Garden on January 3, 1936. Returning after his broken jaw only six months earlier, Ambers took some stiff shots to the chin in the 6th and 7th, but gained a significant points margin, winning eight of the 10 rounds. In the 7th, Ambers put Click on the canvas for a nine-count as they broke from a clinch. Ambers Ambers gained a points advantage quickly, and his speed in the early rounds tired Click, who was sapped of energy for a strong finish in the closing rounds. The win improved Ambers' chances of getting a second shot at Canzanieri for the title. He gained revenge when he captured the lightweight championship by decisioning Tony Canzanieri in 15 rounds on September 3, 1936. As a former sparring partner of Canzanieri, he carried the fight to his opponent and mentor from the outset, turned back two spirited rallies and won by a wide margin in a fight that defined him as a boxer and a competitor. Ambers won a lightweight title bout against Pedro Montanez on September 23, 1937 before an exceptional crowd of 32,000 in a 15-round mixed de decision at New York's Polo Grounds. 
Though the referee voted for a draw, both judges scored the close bout in Amber's favor. With each voting, he had won eight rounds. Jimmy Garrison lost to Ambers in a 10-round points decision of a non-title bout in Kansas City on May 11, 1938. On August 17, 1938, Ambers met Henry Armstrong in a historic fight for the world lightweight title. Armstrong was attempting to become the first fighter in history to win and hold three world titles simultaneously. In a great fight, Ambers was knocked down twice in the fifth and sixth rounds and appeared badly beaten. Ambers mounted a great comeback in the latter half of the match, but la lost the controversial split decision. Armstrong was penalized three rounds in the close bout for fouls. Ambers lost the title for a year until regaining it in a rematch one year later. Frankie Wallace was one of the most frequent opponents for Ambers. Wallace fell to Ambers for the first time when he could not return to the ring for the sixth round in, on December 5, 1938, in Cleveland. In a previous fight in the same city on December 6, 1937, Ambers won in a 10-round unanimous decision on a large boxing ticket that featured a crowd of 12,000 fans. With the rapid left and effective right uppercut, Ambers gained a strong points margin and had an alien Wallace missing throughout the bout. In their first meeting on April 27, 1933 in Utica, New York, Ambers took a six-round points decision. In their last meeting, Ambers achieved an 11th round technical knockout of Baby Armazimendi on February 24, 1937 at New York's Madison Square Garden. In a close bout, the referee stopped the fight in the 11th due to a gash on his opponent's right eyelid, received in the ninth, which made it difficult for him to continue. The cut was opened again in the tenth with left uppercuts and examined by a doctor at the end of the round who ordered the referee to end the bout, which was officially called at the opening of the eleventh. It was the only knockout of Arizimendi's career. Amber's rematch with Henry Armstrong was a as controversial as their first bout. Armstrong was penalized for low blows, which enabled Ambers to capture the 15-round decision on August 22, 1939, before a crowd estimated at 30,000 fans. Penalized for low blows in the 2nd, 5th, 7th, 9th, and 11th rounds, Armstrong would have probably won the fight had it not been for his loss of points for fouls. James Dawson of the New York Times wrote that the title was not won on competition alone, but on fighting rules and ethics. Armstrong was the victim of an injustice. Demonstrating the closeness of the fight before accounting for Armstrong's fouls, the United Press scored the fight seven rounds for Ambers with six for Armstrong and two even. Unlike their first meeting, Ambers re remained on his feet th throughout the bout, except for a single slip in one round. He used infighting consistently in the match, cutting and bruising Armstrong's face. Many boxing reporters considered the match Ambers' last great performance. On May 10, 1940, Ambers defended his title against the wild, free-swinging Lou Jenkins. Jenkins scored an upset when he knocked out the defending champion in the third round at Madison Square Garden. Ambers was down for a count of five with the first in the first and briefly in the second. He had arisen from another fall in the on the canvas at least once prior to the referee stopping the bout of one minute, 29 seconds into the third round. Ambers sought a rematch, and after a tune-up win over Al Bummy Davis, he again faced Jenkins. This time, he suffered a technical knockout from Jenkins in the seventh round before 15,000 fans on February 28, 1941, in Madison Square Garden, New York. After a slow start, Ambers appeared game, taking tough blows from Jenkins in the third through sixth rounds while still using his left effectively at times. 
but in the seventh round, Ambers was floored three times before the referee put an end to the fight, two minutes, 26 seconds, into the seventh round. After his last bout, Ambers wanted to continue with his career, but his manager, Al Wheel, convinced him that he was through and to retire. Ambers never fought again. Before his boxing retirement, he appeared as himself in a small role in MGM's The Crowd Roars, a 1938 film and successful boxing movie starring Robert Taylor. After his retirement from boxing, Ambers served in the Coast Guard during World War II. He then moved to Phoenix, Arizona, where he opened a restaurant and worked in public relations. He died here in Phoenix on April 25, 1995, and is interred here at the St. Francis Cemetery. He and his wife, Margaret Mary, had a daughter and two sons. Lou was inducted into the Ring Boxing Hall of Fame in 1964 and the World Boxing Hall of Fame in 1982 and the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1992. And my friends, I just thought it was appropriate that I pay my respects to this gentleman who fought so hard to become a champion and remained a champion all his life. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, ring the notification bell for my channel. I want to thank all my new subscribers. Uh, it means the world to me that you spend a few minutes of your day to watch my videos. I try to bring you some interesting content. I hope you do like these kind of videos, my friends. I feel there are a lot of people that seem to get forgotten in history. And I try to do my very, very small part in keeping their name alive and letting people know how they impacted others' lives. Thank you, my friends. Have a beautiful day. And adios, amigos.